Have you ever wondered what happens when a travel lift gets a flat tire? This is how it's done. So once again, we're on our way to Port Townsend to work on a boat, and to get there, we have to cross the Tacoma Narrows. And here we see two bridges before us. The one we are on is the older, and the one on the left is the much newer. The older bridge was built in 1940, and only months later, in a big storm, the uh, bridge started to undulate to the point of failure and it was extremely tragic. If you Google Galloping Gertie, you'll get the whole story. Going across the Hood Canal Bridge never gets old. It's just beautiful. Once we cross the uh, Narrows Bridge, the rest of the trip is pretty rural. The only town of any significance is Chimicum, and that's what we're going through here, and that's what we're going through here. Now my favorite part of the trip, descending into town, and here is Boat Haven. I love it. And of course right by the main entrance is Port Towns and Brewery fine establishment and just more uh, boat yard here Mother Ocean is right about here a row in probably won't be able to see her there she is and to go in the back door you want to look for the Safeway gas station down there but we're gonna go straight over to West Marine and pick up some paint. So as we go by the back of the Safeway gas station here's the little back way in. Yeah, I got a new trimaran here. Wasn't there last trip. No success in getting the big fat RG8 VHF cable. There to here. That took a little finagling, but I sneaked it through. Next would be the uh, nav cable, then the three power wires. So this is where we started. This is the original uh, wire outlet. It is packed solid, even with the old wires. So we got this new one inch hole, and we're able to get the big RG uh, eight wire through. And now we've got instruments and I don't know which of these will end up. You may stay with the larger hole. The uh, fixture that goes here uh, will cover the larger hole so we can go either way. It doesn't really matter. Next is the uh, navigation cable, the Raymarine cable. I was able to snake the uh, instrument wiring through. Connector is intact. It's getting to be a little bit messy there though. I think it finally figured out my mast wiring problem. Originally they all came out this opening and we drilled a larger one inch opening. And now we have the new fat RG8 cable for VHF and AIS. We got the new Raymarine instrument cable with lots to spare. And then three new wires to go to the mast head. Red, black, and it shows yellow for the third leg of the combination lights that are available now for um, either anchor light and tricolor or anchor steaming light combination. So the way this is constructed, these wires go down the original hole and they take a sharp turn 
this way, which would be forward on the mask, then another sharp turn and go up. And they go up in their own channel, all the way up. But the mast itself is constructed with uh, the side walls, the longer dimensions of the square. These guys are sister on the inside, and that's, instead of traditional full through blocking, they're just sistered. So there's a rectangular hole up the middle, and I was able to get a snake down to this new hole, and thus we got some new wires in. The only thing that's still a mystery are the uh, spreader light wires and these still work they're not in the greatest of shape but i think i'm going to give up on these and just leave them in place and reuse them should be okay and it's a lot easier to go up and work on these once the mast is in because you're not up that high so let's take a look at the other end Again, VHF, get the Rain Marine instrument mount, and our new three wires. And we're good to go. And here we have Master Spar Builder Bruce Tipton making some adjustments for this shib box fit. And uh, now we can see where the wiring exits the mast head on the port side. And uh, now he's drilling for the pin. And here you can see the clothespin repair methodology that Bruce used. Clothespin repair methodology. So part of the mass build reproject is all new wiring top to bottom. And finally accomplished that as you saw earlier. And with the uh, larger larger diameter RG8 VHF cable, I needed to find a, an outlet. Uh, appliance or fixture that would account for the fact that that wire doesn't bend quite so easily so i found this there's a marine thrift store here in the boat yard here at boat haven port townsend and i found this guy i've started to polish it a little bit it was fully patinaed like this side and eight bucks so this will be the new wire outlet on the side of the mast I had a little lip in here which I've ground down and now I'm starting to polish it. So Bruce is almost completely done. Here we see the mast repair nearly final form. These cheek pieces are really, really beautiful. Nice, beautiful work here. Bruce really does excellent work. This is just beautiful. It's gonna be a shame to cover it with paint eventually. I love those cheeks that compensate for the size of the shifts that are gonna live in there. Another part of the masthead improvement is I'm putting in new Shivs here. These were made by Zephyr Works here in Port Townsend. The black material is Delrin and uh, the bushings are uh, oil impregnated sintered bronze. So these are really, really nice and looking forward to having a nearly friction free <laughs> environment. The old uh, sheaths were pretty worn out in the center. And one of them was uh, grooved for a wire halyard. So a standard braided rope would not lay nicely in there. So these are good. Zephyr works in Port Townsend. It's getting closer. This is really pretty now. And a new strip for the uh, sail track here. Really pretty. Now I'm in the process of taking the sail track off. Lots of screws. So here are the spreaders. I've got uh, two coats of 
epoxy on them and I just did a real light sanding and prep for uh, the application of the primer. I'm gonna use pre-coat. There's some leftover white paint from the past, but I just didn't want to sand down too far. And of course, here is the repair. Really nice job. The epoxy I used was 105 and 207. Uh, Bruce Tipton told me that this combination is a favorite of his to uh, provide a good base for it. Got almost three out of four done with uh, Interlux pre-coat. So she's ready for paint and uh, put back together. So here we've got the uh, initial coat of paint on the new mast head replacement. Ready to bed down with one more coat probably. Be ready to bed down the uh, shift box and the masthead hardware. So I thought I'd include some still photos of Bruce in action here. He's in his element clearly. He loves clamps as you can see. He's uh, got big attention to detail but hopefully you'll get a a view on how he approaches this clothespin method of masthead replacement. And to rewind a bit here, if you're going to have your mast pulled in Port Townsend here at Boat Haven, um, likely this is the crane that's going to do it. And this is Olympic Crane. You can see the uh, phone number obviously displayed. Uh, did a good job for me. Kind of a quirky dude but there may be other options, but this is the staple. So Shelby, what did you think of this video?